When I was 17 or 18 years old and I was working my part-time jobs at like trampoline parks, bars and pubs, that kind of thing, I had absolutely no idea how to hold a conversation, how to be funny, how to be witty, how to actually talk with confidence and charisma and not stutter. And actually the main thing for me that I used to struggle with that you might be able to relate to and it might be the most frustrating thing in the world because you see a cute girl that you want to talk to, you see a guy that you think he's quite cool, I'd like to be friends with him, but you, have no, you want to join in with the group conversations as well, but you have no idea what to say and how to keep the conversation going, how to be funny, how to be the center of attention in conversations, how to be that charismatic social guy He's good with his body language, he stands there with open body language, he's laughing, he's confident, he's got eye contact, he knows exactly what to say and when to say it and how to say it. You wish you could be that guy, don't you? And guess what? That is me, bruv. I am now him. And the only reason I say it with this arrogant kind of patronising tone towards you is because I was the opposite. I was working these part-time jobs and at the time I was actively trying to improve my social skills. I used to go up to people and ask them how the day was going and that kind of stuff and like, oh, you know, what you up to after work and just any sort of conversation starter I could think of. And they'd be like, oh yeah, you know, it's, you know, it's been quite busy today. I'm kind of tired. I just can't wait to get home. Whatever, they'd reply to me. And I'd say, <laughs> okay, yeah. Or I'd just laugh. I was like, <laughs> yeah. That was it. Awkward silence. I wouldn't know what to say. I'd find an excuse then to just walk away or, oh, sorry, you know, it's busy or I'm going to go to the toilet or I'm going to go do this. I'd find an excuse to just get out of the conversation because I had no idea where to go from there. This is frustrating, embarrassing, and just frankly, it's awkward. It makes you look a bit weird. Now, fair play, you're trying. At least you're actually trying. You know, you're going out there on the street, you're saying hello to people, you're saying good morning to people. That is an amazing start. But to get to the level that I'm at right now where you can speak in front of thousands of people on the camera for 18 minutes to up to a half an hour straight without stuttering, without losing my train of thought. It's quite good, isn't it? From the guy, the 17 year old Luke Spurgeon that couldn't even hold a conversation with another human being to the person that's now teaching people how to be social and charismatic. The person you can see in front of you today, the words that you can hear me speak and how I speak them. This wasn't an accident. I didn't just wake up and think, oh, I can speak properly now. <laughs> I can hold conversation. I can, I can talk. I have things to talk about. It wasn't an accident. There was a process I went through, a three-step process. There was a lot more to it, of course, and I teach you that in my coaching down below in the description if you want to learn the full guide to being the charismatic social guy that you want to be. But I'm going to briefly touch over three main points, okay? Number one is obviously the way that you speak, the words that you say, how you say them, etc., etc. A lot of you boys are out here, like myself when I was younger, stuttering, fumbling over your words, umming and ah uh, yeah, um, oh, well, I did, uh, oh, I went to the shop, and then I uh, uh, did this, and uh, it's boring, it's very disengaging, nobody wants, I, bro, I bore myself even doing the examples right there for you, a lot of you guys walk around saying like all the time as well, stop that, it makes you seem illiterate, it makes you seem just like a retard, to be quite frank with you, it makes you seem a bit stupid, well, like, I went to the shop, like, and uh, I got some kind of monster, like, and, uh, yeah. Wake up, bro. Wake up. Stop mouth breathing. Fucking wake up. It's not hard. Just listen very carefully. Speech is number one. How do we improve our speech? How do we stop stuttering? How do we stop umming and ahhing and using filler words? Just read a fucking book, number one. is read a book. Start writing as well. Write in your journal. These two things that helped me massively as I started reading, I started writing. And also, I started to emulate good speakers. I started to look up to people that spoke articulately and quite eloquently. People like Jordan Peterson, I remember I used to watch in particular. This is before Andrew Tate. Andrew Tate's an amazing speaker as well. Go and watch some Andrew Tate. Go and study the way he speaks. How does he speak? How does he say the words? Go and watch these people that are good speakers and learn from them. Simply emulate them, like a child almost. How do you learn anything in life? Is you watch and you learn, you pay attention. Fucking flies, bro. So do the same now. Okay, I stutter. We'll, we'll talk about stuttering in a second, but let's say, okay, I don't really know how to speak. I don't really know how to like voice my words as they come out of my mouth, right? <laughs> if we're going to that autistic level of like, I don't know how to actually speak properly. Like I'm, a, I'm just shy. I'm awkward. I, my tone of voice is, is terrible. Like it's shy and timid. How do we work on that? You just emulate people. You, it really is as simple as not copying them because you don't want to try and like, oh, hi, I'm Andrew. You don't want to try and sound like a bugai, but just look at the way these people speak and learn from them. 
read a lot of books because as you read, your brain is naturally slowing down as you're reading the words. You also expand your vocabulary. So the words that you use make you sound more intelligent. And if you actually know what these words mean, I recommend looking them up. If you find a new word that you don't know what, what it means, look them up in a dictionary or Google. Go and learn, go and expand your vocabulary by reading. And then also practice writing in the morning as well. Go and write down three things that you're grateful for every single morning. Not only is it good for your mental health, but you're also, again, slowing down your brain as you write the words. You're learning to spell properly. You're learning to speak properly in your own mind. So naturally, when you speak in the real world, you'll just get better at it. Obviously, with all of these things, all of the videos that I, I talk about, all of the disclaimers that I give, the main one thing that you can do in order to get better at anything in life, it's very, very simplistic, it's just practice. Obviously, just practice. The more that you speak, the more that you do it, the more that you commit to it, this is a big thing. Because I never used to commit to conversations. I used to go over there wanting to improve my social skills, wanting to get better in conversations, wanting to be the funny guy that all the group laughed at and stuff like that. You know, because I'd look over at these groups of like, fuck off, flies. Of these like masculine men with the beards and shit. And I'm out here, barely even grow a beard, right? And I'm like, I wish I was like those guys. And, you know, they're funny and laughing and joking and charismatic and open body language and all this kind of stuff. And I thought, right, what is it that they're doing that I'm not? Obviously, it's confidence and all that kind of stuff as well, which is a different video entirely. But a lot of it is just practice. They've just done it longer. The guys that I was looking up to comparing myself to are like 30 years old. And they grew up without social media, which is a big thing as well. You know, getting out into the real world and just talking more and using your voice more and actually practicing speaking words rather than just sitting behind your fucking phone will do you wonders. You'll learn a lot from it. Maybe you're a part-time job or college or school or in the gym. Any opportunity that you have walking down the street, in the park. I do it all the time. I'll be cycling on the bike, going through the park. And I'll be like, oh, you mate, you're all right. Good morning, you're all right. And every now and then. I remember the other day I was on a coaching call around my block, around my little area. I live on kind of like a, a bit of a rough estate, let's say. Now, next to my rough estate, there's quite a nice area. There's like a posh area. Like a fancy area, if any Americans are watching. And... There's nice cars and stuff like that. And I was riding around on this bike doing a little coaching call with some guy. And funnily enough, funnily enough, we were talking about fucking hell, making a video on speech and I can't even talk. We were, we were talking about social skills, okay? And how to improve social skills and stuff like that. Some lady pulls up in the car, rolls down the window, and I'm thinking like, okay, what the fuck's going on here? Because I've seen her pull up from the distance and I'm very observant, I'm paying attention to my surroundings, etc. Talking to this guy, yeah, social skills, yeah, you want to practice, bro, do this, do that. Some lady pulls up, rolls down the window, and she's like, basically does this, like, come here a second, darling, that's what she said, something like that. And I kind of looked around, make sure there's no cars, cycled over, and I was like, are you okay? And she was like, hi, I'm so sorry, I don't mean to accuse you of anything, but there's been some lads riding around on the block, trying to nick stuff, trying to steal stuff, basically. And I thought, I know who that is, because <laughs> I know everyone around here, right? and I know who's trying to do that. I was like, oh, you know, I do apologize if I gave the wrong impression. I was very polite and stuff like that. And I was on the call with the guy as well. I was kind of like, oh, come on, lady, like, leave me alone. I've got a business call. And she's like, yeah, because we see you around here a lot on your bike and on your phone. Obviously, I'm doing my calls around there, right? I was just wondering what, you, what you're getting up to. And I was like, oh, I'm just doing a business call. I'm currently on one right now. And she's like, oh, really? Oh, your parents must be really proud. Like, what, what is it? What do you do? And I'm like, oh, I'm helping young men and stuff like that. I'm kind of like a life coach. And she was like, oh, your parents must be really proud. That's amazing, blah, blah, blah. And I went back on the call and I was like, bro, isn't that the perfect example of social skills? Because we had like a proper five minute conversation just talking about life. And I was holding my phone there so he could see me. And he, get to, he, he got to watch me, you know, eye contact, smiling, like, ah, oh, yeah, yeah, enjoying the conversation. And before she left, I asked for a name and stuff, which he said, oh, you know, that was something that I forget. I always, I always forget to ask for the name. Again, a little bonus tip for you boys there. If you're ever in a conversation and you meet people, ask for the name, shake the hand, say the name back to them so you remember it as well. So... Obviously, I was doing that. Cool, whatever. I don't really know where I got onto that where I got onto that story for. What was the what was the point of that story? <laughs> Fuck knows, bro. But anyway, regardless, speaking, practice. That was it. Practice. I'm out here I'm talking to people all the time. I always make any excuse that I can to speak to people and just try and start a conversation, even if it's in the most awkward positions, awkward you know situations possible. I always try and speak. You know, I remember there's been so many times I've been walking down the block and I'll be like, oh, you're all right, bro. I'll, I'll, I'll change my tone. I'm kind of like a chameleon, right? I'm not changing who I am because that's in me, but I'm changing how I respond to different people. This is a good skill for you to pick up as well. It's just, you're not going to talk to everyone in the exact same way. I'm not going to talk to the CEO of a business in a business meeting the same way I'm going to talk to the chavs on the block, right? The boys on the block. It's just not going to happen. I'm going to change my tone. I'm going to change 
that percentage of me. It's still me. I'm not changing who I am. It's still in there. But, you know, you just tap into different percentages. Point being, get out there, practice. Understood? That is how you will improve your speech. The more that you do it, the better that you'll become. Stuttering. What causes you to stutter? Two reasons for this. Number one, you care too much about what people think. Uh, you can go and watch my other videos. I'll come and invest in a coach and I'll teach you how to overcome that fear and overcome that mindset. Number two... You are thinking too much about what you're going to say before you say it. You're kind of operating from a script mentality rather than a freestyle mentality. This is what I like to do. Even when I record my videos, just before I pulled out this camera and started talking to you, I thought to myself, ah, what should I start the video off by saying? Like, how should I start it to get your attention, right? And then I thought to myself, no, fuck that. Stop trying to read from a script. Stop trying to like follow a, a little guideline. Go in there, press record and just start speaking. Start freestyling that shit. You know you're capable. You know you're good enough. Do it. You're a fucking G, just press record, talk. That is how I record every single one of my videos. I challenge myself and I freestyle it. There's never any script. Look at this, bro. There's no, there's no script ever. You know what I mean? I'm just chilling here talking to you. This is fresh off the mind. This is how you know I'm talking from experience. When you get into conversations to stop you from stuttering, number one, stop caring so much because no one else gives a fuck about you. And what's the worst that could happen? Let's say you do stutter. So what? Own it with confidence. Laugh about it. Turn it into a joke. You know, like... Stop taking life so seriously. This is why you keep stuttering, because you care too much. Just stop giving a fuck. I know it's easier said than done, but if you have it in your brain of like, right, stop caring, who gives a fuck, like whatever, don't matter. I'm just going to do me. I'm going to say what I want to say, when I want to say it, how I want to say it. Who gives a fuck what anyone else thinks? You, well, okay, you laughed at me, so what? <laughs> so? I laugh at myself, but I don't give a fuck. Having that ability to laugh at yourself and not take life too seriously will help you stop stuttering. But number two, stop trying to read from a script. Just freestyle it. Don't, when you go up to the girl in the gym, don't think, what am I going to say? What am I going to say? Just go and fucking go up to her first. Make your legs move. You're not even over there yet. Why are you thinking about what to say if you're on the other side of the gym? Fuck. Go over there and then start speaking because the situation that you create for yourself in your brain might change when you actually get there in reality. So what you've planned to say isn't probably even going to work anyway. You might think, oh, I'm going to go over there and compliment her water bottle, but she might have put a water bottle in a bag. Just a random example. Do you get what I'm saying? Plans change. Your plans can get fucked up. So you must be adaptable. You must just learn to freestyle this shit. Let's go straight over there. And as you get over there, then say something about the environment, what she's wearing, maybe if it's probably not in the gym, you don't want to compliment. Like, oh, I like, I like your gym outfit. It's a bit weird, but you get what I'm saying. Maybe she's on a night out, she's wearing a cool jacket or something, whatever. So freestyle, keep that in mind. That's very important. Stop thinking so much. Just go in there with a present mindset. Enjoy the world around you and just speak just chat shit that's a mindset i like is just chat shit you'll stop stuttering you'll just start saying what you want to say and you'll say it how you want to say it and you won't give a fuck what anyone else thinks i come on the camera and i don't care what you think quite frankly not in a negative way or in an arrogant way but if i stutter i don't care i've crashed my bike on videos before and just carried on like i don't give a fuck i've fallen off the bike on the video and just pick you back up and be like yo bro we're good <laughs> like i don't care do you know what i mean i'm not over analyzing excuse me point proven i'm not overcomplicating it i'm just being me i'm just doing what i want to do that's a big 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 mindset shift for you boys that you can take okay right number two in terms of improving your wittiness and funniness because that's what this is about right you want to be funny you want to know what to say and when to say it a lot of girls always say to me and they say it in quite like a playful teasy way because i'll joke with them they might say something like oh Maybe, for example, I might meet a girl. We've been seeing each other for like a month or something. It's not serious. We're not boyfriend and girlfriend. We're just seeing each other consistently. We both enjoy each other's company, okay? And she might come out with like a joke. She's testing the waters. She's just seeing how I respond to this. She's testing, shit testing me, basically. She might say something like, maybe the night's ended and I, I'm going to go now. I'm going to go do some business. I'll be like, all right, I've got to go now. You know, it's lovely seeing you. I'll give her a kiss goodbye and, and go and leave. And she might say something like, oh, you're going to go and see some of your other hoes now. Like, as a joke, she's not trying to, like, be a dick or nothing. She's genuinely saying it as a joke. Like, it's funny. And I'd be like, I don't know. I might say something like, oh, I'm a man of God. I'm going to go read the Bible. You know, or I'll, I'll be in the club and she'll text me and be like, don't be kissing any other hoes. And I'll send her a picture and be like, I'm a man of God. I'm in the corner reading the Bible when I go to the club. So you just kind of turn things into a joke like that. Point is, they always say the same thing to me. They always say, how do you always know what to say? Like, do you know what I mean? Because they're trying to shit test me here. And I've just said something funny and witty. And it's like, you know, just off the top of my head. But it, it's kind of as if I'm not confirming or denying what she said. Like, maybe I am going to go see some other hoes. I'm not telling you. I'm just going to go and read the Bible. Do you know, it's kind of like a joke. You're being witty. You're being funny. You're being playful and teasy. And there's also a bit of mystery. She doesn't actually know what you're going to do. 
very elite level game here for you boys okay there's more of that in the coaching down below in the description if you really want to get good with women you really want to get good with your speech come and invest in that money can be made back knowledge will stay with you forever right just thought of that on the spot there you go there's another way a bit of a, a, a you know a cunning uh, adaptable freestyle for you you want to be quick like that that's what i'm saying stop thinking so much there's no thoughts in my brain right now as i speak these words i'm just literally freestyling i could probably be a rapper bro i'm not gonna lie <laughs> okay so in order for you to get this reaction from women where they're like, oh, you always just know what to say. You always have the right, you just have a way with words. They've always said that to me. You got a way with words, Luke. And I love it because it's like, bro, I always used to be the weird, shy, awkward, little skinny white nerd. Now I'm tanned as fuck, bro. I've got the jaw like, yeah, I've got a way with words now. Do you know what I mean? It's like the improvement is always possible. You just have to put the work in. You've just got to action things. You've got to do shit. Stop watching YouTube videos. Go and practice. Get out in the real world. Anyway, number two is lifestyle, life experience. A lot of the time I get into conversations and the reason why I would not know what to say, you know, back at the trampoline job or in the pub when I was trying to talk to customers and stuff like that, and I wouldn't really have, I kind of just have to kill the conversation, is because I had no life experience. And number two, I wasn't committing to it. I wasn't committing to the conversations. I think I briefly touched on this before, but I, I lost my train of thought, right? Commitment is very, very big. I used to run away from the conversations. I used to try and hide, like, I'd get into it, ask them how the day's going, and then instantly be like, oh, you know, I don't really know what to say. Let me just kind of make an excuse to not, not speak. Like, oh, sorry, i got to go, go to the toilet. i got to go do this. And I'd run away from committing to that weakness of mine. I'd run away from that fear, which is basically what it was. So commit to it fully. Regardless of the outcome, detach from the outcome and commit to the conversation fully. Just tell yourself, right, I am not leaving this conversation until I've been here for at least five minutes. Whatever, just a random example. Just commit to it. Stay a little bit longer than you normally would. Maybe even if it's an awkward silence, think of something to say. Use your environment. Use the per what the person's wearing, the energy. Be genuinely interested in people. That is a really, really big, big, big tip is be interested in the other person. Okay? So life experience. I never used to do anything. Therefore, I did not have anything to talk about. I used to just sit in my room and play video games for 16 hours a day. What the fuck would I... What, what was I able to talk about, right? Well, today, guys, I got diamond on Rainbow Six Siege. No one gives a fuck. That's not real life conversation. No one cares unless you're speaking to a bunch of nerds, right? So naturally, because I never used to do anything other than sit inside and play video games and sit on the internet and watch porn, you've not really got anything to talk about. You've not got any funny jokes to crack or any stories to tell. You're just quite bl boring and bland and unseasoned, yeah? You don't want to be like that. So get out into the real world. Go and do things. Try a million different part-time jobs, nine-to-five jobs. Just try shit. Just do things. I've told this story many times, but I've been in jobs of... When I went through a phase of just going through loads of different nine to five jobs, I did like a restaurant job with a Chinese triad gang. <laughs> I've done charity fundraising, zip line operation jobs, you know, I've done fucking bar work, from, you know, trampoline, anything, bro. Just do things. The world is literally all out there and you just sat on your phone watching me talk shit to you for 17 minutes, 18 minutes. And you wonder why you have nothing to talk about. Did you see the new Luke Sturgeon video? No one cares. <laughs> so. Please just do stuff. Have an open mind to the world. Stop being so stubborn. Stop being so arrogant. Try things. Try other people's way of doing things. Meet new people. Go to new places. Oh, I wouldn't really want to go to clubs. Oh, I don't like doing that. Oh, I don't want to go to that restaurant. Oh. Stop with this stubborn mindset. Try shit. If you've never done something before, do not write it off until you've tried it. That is a very good mindset to have. Very good way of just improving your life experiences. Go through the world and say to yourself, why am I writing these things off? Why am I saying no to this? Have I ever tried it before? No. So try it. And then tell, then tell yourself, okay, I don't like it. Then never do it again. Cool. But at least you can say you've got that experience. You've got a story to tell. You've done something. Bro, if I tell you some of the stories I've been through, <laughs> maybe I'll, I'll divulge my personal life as we go along on this journey together through YouTube. Yeah, I've, bro, I'm surprised I'm still alive at 21 years old today. I'm surprised I'm still alive. My shit I've gone through, bro. Some of the stupid shit, the stupid like alcohol mistakes and stuff like that sex mistake like bro some of the shit i've done i'm surprised i'm still alive number one i'm surprised i'm still here with a psychologically healthy state of mind i really am oh my god bro but that's what it is right i'm I, don't shy away from from bad shit don't shy away from making mistakes don't shy away from like you know doing the wrong thing because it's stories to tell it's life experience it's funny bro you can look back and laugh stop taking life too seriously you are here once and all that you do every day is business, business, work, work. <laughs> Escape the matrix, bro. Chill the fuck out. Not in the sense where you're sacrificing your productivity. Get your, all, all your essential tasks out the way first. Of course, yeah, do your productive shit. But go and enjoy your life at the same time. Go and meet new people. Go and take that girl on a date. Go and spend some time with your family and take them for a meal or something. 
Go and try that new job that you've never done before that you might be you're kind of thinking about. Just go and fucking do it. Do shit. Take that different route that you've never been down. Get lost in this park and try and find your way back. Just do more things. Go to the new karate gym or kickboxing or boxing or whatever. Understand what I'm saying? Cool. Life experience. Number two. Naturally, now I'm in conversations. I have things to say. People might say something to me and I'll be like, oh yeah, shit, I've been there. Or I've done that. Or yeah, I've met that person before. And then you can talk, you can go down different conversation avenues because you've done more things. If all that you ever do is watch my videos and work on your fucking business, your e-commerce business or drop shipping or whatever, and you go into a conversation with real normal people in the real world, and you try and talk to them and be funny and be witty, but you have nothing, you don't do anything other than what I've just mentioned. How are you going to have anything to say? People might say, to, oh yeah, I went to this really beautiful Italian restaurant the other day. It's really fancy. I took this girl out there, you know, it's in the center of the city, whatever. And um, yeah, the waiters in there were just really polite. It kind of took me back a little bit because, you know, most people are quite rude. Whatever, I'm just freestyling this shit again. Oh yeah, I've been to that restaurant, bro. Is it is it here on this street next to this thing? Yeah, mate, remember the chef as well? That guy was funny as fuck. Like, I don't know what it was. Cool. There you go. You've just got some, some common ground. The more that you do, the more you'll have to talk about. It's as simple as that. The more that you'll be able to have a way with words, the more that you'll be able to just know what to say in certain situations and be funny and be witty and think of what to say exactly on the spot rather than be like, oh, I don't really know what to say. I don't have awkward silences. I've done so much shit at 21 years old. I've gone through so much shit. And not only that, but I'm also genuinely interested in the person that I'm talking to. I never run out of things to say. How could I? The conversation is literally endless. If you are genuinely interested in myself and we were having a conversation, the amount of avenues you could take a conversation down, the amount of things that you could uncover about me as a person, by asking one question, I give you an answer. Then you could get another four questions just from that one answer. Then you could divert back to another question complete. It just never ends. It's so easy. You're just thinking about yourself too much. Number three, in order to be funny and witty and always know what to say, is have stories to tell and be good at storytelling. Now, this comes from just not being a boring guy. I think mainly from my personal experience, if I think back to when I tell stories and stuff like that and how I've improved my storytelling skills on YouTube and stuff, it's the way that you do it. It's not necessarily about what you're talking about or what you're saying, it's how you say it. It's the energy. I could tell you a story about before. I was riding a bike in this park and it was sunny and I was riding with one hand. I was riding with one hand, okay, and I had my phone in the other hand and I was talking to you. I was making a YouTube video, right? So the sun was shining in my eyes at the time. So I couldn't really see I was riding the bike. And all the flies were coming in and attacking me and stuff like that. And, you know, I'm riding and it's, it's a bumpy road. I'm trying to hold on and record and keep my train of thought. And as I went around the corner, there was a little mini rock on the floor. And bang, I crashed into the rock. And I nearly fell off the bike while I was recording the video, right? I'm just shitting shit, bruv. That wasn't the most... Bruv, what, you didn't gain anything from that story. There was nothing of value there. I just told you how about I was riding through the park and I fell off my bike. That was the story. That was what I was saying. But it's how I said it that kept you engaged. It's how I said it that kept you watching, that kept you paying attention. You didn't look away just then. You didn't get distracted. You were fully engaged in my shitty story about me falling off the bike because of how I was saying it. So energy is the most important thing with any conversation that you're having, okay? You know, to be funny and be witty, you must just enjoy life. No one's going to enjoy it. No one's going to enjoy your jokes if you don't enjoy life. If you're like, oh, well... I was riding through the park, like, and um, I was trying to record a video or something, and I kind of fell off my bike. What is that? I'm bored already, bro. I'm falling asleep hearing myself speak like that. Like, stop. That's how guys talk. It's so boring. And you wonder why you're getting replaced and cheated on by girls. Easy, Because bro, there's like a million other guys that like, talk like you. Stop with that. This dopey, like, vaping fucking mindset. Stop that shit, bro. Be funny, be energetic, be positive, enjoy life, enjoy the stories that you're telling. I enjoy, I enjoy telling you that story about how I fell off the bike because it makes me laugh. Because I enjoy it, my energy is good. So naturally you enjoy it. Understood? Simple. Sweet. Get out there, practice what I've said in this video. I know it's a bit all over the place and I've told some random stories here and there, but hopefully you can take at least one bit of value or one piece of information that changes your mindset changes your perception if you can brilliant go and implement it immediately get off of youtube go out there into the real world and implement what you have learned today do you understand good coaching's down below if you want to learn more from me look after yourself it's gonna be a thunderstorm tonight and i'll see you soon bro